Hey Rose, want to grab a drink? Your happiest hour of the week starts now. Sit back, relax, and enjoy because, because the, the drinks, drinks are, are on us. us. Welcome back to Drinks on Us. I'm Riley. And I'm Rose. We are so happy you joined us for happy hour. Oh my gosh, Rye. I feel like this is, I cannot believe like as we went to go record this, we were like, how did we make it here? It has been such a long time coming. Sorry, I'm still getting used to doing all of this. As you can tell, if you listen to the intro, we're kind of like working out our nerves and (laughs) excitement and all that kind of stuff. So bear with us. Um, But we are just so excited. Isn't this feel like a dream come true? Yes. Oh my gosh. We made it through a lot of technical difficulties, but we are here now. We just can't wait. Episode one. I cannot wait. (laughs) Episode one, we're doing the damn thing. Um, So today we are going to be talking all things friendship. We heard you guys, we asked for your advice and I feel like friendship was like a glaring big thing that people wanted us to talk about. And it feels very fitting because obviously Riley and I are here because of our friendship. Um, yep. So we are going to dive into all types of things, friendships. I really feel like this could be an entire series because we could talk about so much. For sure. I mean, having close friends at this stage in our lives is so important and we'll talk about that, but I agree with you. Yeah. Um, we're going to go into like how to maintain adult friendships or how to make friends as you get older. Um going through different seasons. If your friends are in different seasons than you, toxic friendships, um, friendship breakups, kind of just how to foster friendships, especially with distance. Cause that's something that Riley and I go through. So anyways, I could get ahead of myself, but before we get into it, Rye, what are you drinking? Yes. So tonight I am drinking a glass of white wine. Um, my new favorite brand is it's called white Haven. It's a Sauvignon Blanc. I love like anything dry. And this has been my drink of choice lately. It is delish. Rose, what are you drinking? It looks gorgeous. What do you think I'm drinking? (laughs) One guess. Definitely. It looks like an Aperol spritz. Yes. I'm such an Aperol spritz, um, girl. I feel like the Aperol spritz is like either love it or you hate it. For sure. It's an acquire. I remember the very first time that I tried an Aperol spritz, I hated it. Like Aperol (laughs) is a very, I can't, I don't think so. Okay. I was thinking (laughs) maybe it was in Raleigh with the girls. Oh, maybe. I feel like you liked it before I did. Cause I remember like Aperol is a very acquired taste. Now I love it, but it took a couple tries. I literally make it. at my <laughs> wedding, that was one of the signature drinks in Aperol Spritz. Oh my gosh. I It was an Aperol Spritz and Old Fashioned, which is Ryan, my husband, and his favorite drink is Old Fashioned. Mine's Aperol Spritz. And we can just save that story for another time, but we had a very, very good time at the McClure's wedding. Um, <laughs> but yeah, anyways, I was just going to say, I feel like I make all my friends try Aper- Aperol Spritz. So if you're listening or watching try it. Don't knock it till you try it, but yes, cheers. Um, and sound off in the comments and let us know what you're drinking this episode, whether you're going for the mocktail or cocktail, we're always going to have a drink in hand during this part of our segment. Well, honestly the whole show, but we're always going to talk about it because we're big drink girls. Yeah. Like it doesn't have to be alcohol either. Just in general, I have found that sometimes I don't even want an alcoholic drink. I just want a drink in a cute glass. So I'll do like kombucha in a wine glass sometimes and really hits the spot. I totally agree. I feel like sometimes I just need to throw a sparkling water in a wine glass. So I feel like I'm romanticizing my life. I love that that's such a trend right now. Yes. But I have to tell you guys, if you are listening or watching. It has been quite the chaotic past couple of days. Um, All things Taylor Swift. If you are a Swifty, you get it. It's been crazy. I wish that we could show them our text chain from when she announced that she was going on tour in 2024 here. Okay. Also, chaos. I was full naive to thinking it was in a month. And I was... Oh, yeah. And by the way, we thought it was this year. So we're like looking at our calendars, trying to plan everything. And like halfway through the conversation, we're like, wait, it's not until next year, but I'm I'm so excited. Regardless, we have to go. We have to go. We have to figure out a way because I am like the soul. I feel like Swifty out there that has not made their way to one concert. Um, so no offense to anyone who's been, but if you've been more than like twice, can you please 
please like, (laughs) let me go. (laughs) I am so sad. And I'm honestly like a little bit heartbroken that it's next year because I was just like so happy that I was going to, it was right. It's right by my birthday too. So I was like, this is going to be perfect. I'm going to have my best friends. We're going to go to Taylor, but still I'm very excited. We're just going to do it next year. We're going to do it next year. That gives us more time to figure out really cute outfits cute outfits and just have the best time. Best weekend. Girls trip weekend. Yes. Where are we going to go? I feel like Indy we, or maybe Miami. We don't yeah, know yet. In, Indy or Miami is kind of what we're um, picking between, but it's funny. I say all those comments about like, can I please go? Because the comments and things on TikTok about like the whole country fighting for like five cities she's going to next year. (laughs) I'm like, oh my gosh, this is like, may the odds be ever in your favor, honestly. Literally, if we actually get tickets, which I'm manifesting that we do, it will be a miracle. It will be a miracle. Um, Okay, speaking of celebrities, I have not talked to you yet about the Lizzo drama. What is your take on it? Okay, it's kind of crazy. Like, I feel like that is something that you can't just make up. And Lizzo Agreed. put out a statement. Did you read it? Um, wait, no, she did. She put out, put a, out st- a statement. I'm pretty sure on her Instagram story and it was kind of long, but it didn't really deny it. And so I feel like honestly, the statement kind of made it worse for her because she wasn't denying these crazy claims with the banana. I mean, <laughs> oh my God, the banana, is- the banana. It's wild. It is I was just, absolutely wild. I was trying to tell Ryan the banana, um, and I like saying it out loud made it feel worse than like hearing somebody else talk about right, it. Like but, you can't just make that up. Right. And there's a lot, a lot of people and different experiences all saying different stories of their experiences with her. Now, obviously we are not sure if it's true. So like I'm speaking hypothetically, like if this were to all come back, that it is true. My thought is just she portrays a very bi- like complete opposite uh, image. Right, right. It's all about like equality, accepting, loving, kindness, and everything that's coming out is kind of against that. I'm going to give her like the benefit of the doubt until we know a hundred percent like what her story is, but I do feel bad for like all these stories. If they I feel are true. so bad. It's her backup dancers, right? I think her backup dancers. And then I heard too, like some different people that were hired on for jobs, um, like filming and stuff like that. Like they walked away after two weeks because it was oh so toxic. Gosh. Oh my gosh. I didn't hear that. It's yeah. sad. Cause that's such yeah. a fun job and like being a backup dancer for Lizzo would be so cool, but so not cool. in and, like, that kind of environment. in her era right now. Like it is yeah. Lizzo dominant. So anyways, I just had to get, I just wanted to know your take on that. Um, yeah. Crazy. So crazy. Much. Very much. I can't believe it's already August. Like, well, okay. So tell me how you feel. I am so ready for fall, but I feel like some people get mad. They're like, no summer forever. I know. Are you ready for fall? Do you think? I'm torn. Fall is like, if fall could last forever, I'm such a fall girl, but I always have like a love hate with fall knowing what's coming next. Does that make like sense? Cold. I feel like we both live in cold, snowy places where the roads yes. get icy and it's just kind of miserable and like gray every day. Yes. But yeah, I love fall because I am obsessed with pumpkin and just like, yeah, it's cool and crisp outside. You need a little jacket. I don't know. Yes. I'm so excited. Honestly, if you guys like ever want to know what Riley's house is like, it is always done up and so cozy and it smells so good, <laughs> especially around fall. That's how like, I feel about your house. Oh my gosh. I feel like if Riley could have pumpkin scented candles all year round, she would, but I, would. I am excited. I love all everything fall. I just feel like summer flew by like what? August. I'm like, yeah, I think it we, did. We were both traveling a lot. So I feel like that took up like a lot of time. Yes. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. If, if winter could just stop December 26th, yeah. then I'd be all about it. But, um, yeah. Okay. I did want to tell you too. I don't know if you guys can see if you're watching in the videos, if my lips, um, have like a cute gloss to it. Um, <laughs> Lawless. Riley got me on Lawless. Is that the official name? Lawless. Forget the filler, right? Yes. Okay. So it's lip gloss. 
lip gloss is my newest obsession. So actually all the content you've been seeing, or if you haven't seen, we did a content photo shoot leading up to the release of drinks on us. And we did so many lipstick shots, especially in the mirror when we were writing out drinks on us, you'll have to go to our Instagram drinks on us pod. If you haven't seen, um, it was so hard to keep applying this lip gloss. I did not have lip gloss and Riley had this lawless brand and I was so obsessed. And the reason I'm bringing this up, right, is because when I was in New York, there's a new summer flavor, watermelon, which I'm not like, I'm not like a huge watermelon diehard girly. And, um, I had like a cherry vanilla last time. And I feel, I think yours was, I forget. It was something pink. pink. It's called like Daisy pink or something. Very on brand for me. Very on brand for Riley. Anyways, it is so good. It's like a perfect pink that kind of like tints your lips a little bit. I'm obsessed. You have to try it. So it's pink. It's not like red. I feel like I think of watermelon as more of a red hue. I think it's darker than the one that you um, had, the Daisy. Okay. Yeah. It like gives you a nice tint if you're wanting, like I don't have, I just have liner and the gloss on right now. But I'm obsessed. If you guys are in the market for a new lip gloss, like a going out, kind of like want to feel done up. Um, my only kickback is it is a tiny bit sticky. Yeah, it's kind of thick. But what I like about it is it's supposed to be like a plumping gloss. It's called Forget the Filler. But right. it doesn't tingle. I no. feel like the other ones that I've tried, the other brands, tingle mm-hmm. my lips. And it's almost uncomfortable. So this one's good. It doesn't tingle. Yes. So give it a try. It's at uh, Sephora. They just have like a really small section. So it's kind of a hunt to find it. (laughs) Worth it though. Speaking of lip gloss really quickly, when you were talking about our photo shoot, it reminded me. So we had this brand shoot for Drinks on Us and the whole idea started with us writing the title Drinks on Us on the mirror in red lipstick. So we're like planning this for months and months and we get to the shoot and we're like so excited. (laughs) And and I know where you're going with this. We're like, oh my God, we forgot red lipstick to write on the mirror with. We were freaking out. We had every other detail perfectly planned. Yes. Everything was Typing in order. Typing is to a T. We're Our photo and video probably thought we were psycho. Everyone thinks we're psycho. We are so type A, which we will get into that. You guys will probably find that out. But we forgot the red lipstick, the most important part. And luckily, I just travel with like a whole lipstick bag. So I was like, hopefully I have something in here and pulled it out. It was like the MAC. It was actually perfect. I couldn't have picked it, a better lipstick if I tried. Also, like, shout out to you. The way she wrote drinks on us, we had one take. We had one take. We had one we take. Nothing to clean the mirror. Um, thank goodness it wiped off because we were back in the hotel after our photo shoot finished at, like, what, midnight? It was so late. It was so late, and somehow it wiped off perfectly, but Riley wrote it so well. We had one take. The <laughs> lipstick was gone after. I mean, I'm like, I, just, I hope you I never want to use that again. <laughs> yeah. Um... That was but, so fun. Yeah, it was. When you were talking about lipstick, it like reminded me of that. But definitely wanted to tell you makeup wise while we're on the subject, I have been in the market for a new foundation. I'm literally, I think today I use like my last pump of my foundation and I've bought this same one for a while. It's the It Cosmetics CC Cream and it has oh, SPF. I see everyone talk about that. Yes, I love it. But sometimes it's not full coverage enough for me. Mm. So I am in the market for the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. Have you heard of it? Yeah. I've been hearing about it. Yeah. But people love it. People love it. My friend Alyssa were at a wedding a couple weeks ago and her foundation looked so good all night. We were on the dance Mm -hmm. floor and like sweating. And so that really sold me on it. So I think I'm going to go buy that probably this weekend, honestly, because I don't have any foundation left. You have to let me know. I will update you. Everyone raves about it. And I'm just like, I need to pull the trigger. So yeah, I'll let you know if I I get really, it. Yeah. Let me know if you get it, what you think of it. Cause I just recently, um, went back to the Georgie Armani foundation. Yes. I, this, I it's called finding, like silk. It's yes. light. Yeah. Yes. It feels I, good on your skin. I've tried a bunch of different ones. I wasn't a fan of the makeup by Mario. Um, oh, I good wanted to, to love it. It was just, it. I don't know. Maybe I got the wrong shade. I'm really bad at doing that. But anyways, I do love the Giorgio Armani, but okay. You know, I live and swear by like Sophia Richie and mm-hmm. Hailey Bieber. The and, aesthetic. Yes. Like they're my fashion and aesthetic girlies. Um, and they, okay. I saw this TikTok of this girl saying if Hailey and Sophia are using this hourglass skin tint, I'm going to go get it. And 
I just, you know, once you watch something, then like you keep seeing everyone's experience and everyone's raving about it. And I was almost out of my skin tint. Uh, Do you use a skin tint? I don't, but I'm intrigued. Okay. So I went out and I got it when I got more Giorgio Armani. I'm, I love skin tint because I feel like it helps me. My skin's like on the drier side. So I feel like if you're on the drier side, it's nice to have a skin tint because it keeps things dewy and like that glassy feel that I think is really in right now. Um, and I got it. It's yay, amazing. I'm obsessed. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, you're making me want to try it. I would so say do try you wear it. it. Do you wear foundation over it or you wear it by itself? I like for today, I did, um, Georgie Armani and, um, the hourglass. So I just got it. Like this is my first time using it. So I'll give a proper review, but on first time review, I love it. Um, but also on days where I like with my old skin tint on days that I just like wanted to kind of feel put together, but no makeup. If I have like a work call or something, I'll just do that. So it's kind of universal, versatile. Yeah, I love that. I am so glad that you got it because I feel like something goes viral on TikTok one time and then Sephora is out of it forever. Like you can't find it anywhere. Like that drunk elephant, um, the bronzing drops. I wanted them so badly because everyone was talking about them. They were sold out. So I'm proud of you for getting it. I'm sure it felt good. Thank you very much. Yes. (laughs) I honestly should get a couple more and then maybe like- a lighter tone for when we're in the winter. I feel like I stink yeah. at doing that. Like That's I don't so have a good variety. Like I watch all these girls on TikTok and they're like, I have the shade in the shade and I mix yes. this. I'm like, when I'm out of something or I have something, it's either a dead miss on my skin tone or I have to wait and try something else. So honestly, that's a really good idea. I need to be better about that. We should that. stock up. Yeah. We're such stock planners. Up. I can't believe we don't like think about that. <laughs> Probably because our husbands are like, what is this bill at Sephora? <laughs> I am in the market. So I have that Dibs Beauty. Um, it's oh, like a glow stick. So it is a shimmer, a body shimmer. Mm-hmm. And you basically, it's a stick and you put it on your body and rub it in. And okay. it's gorgeous. I have it in shade. I think it's Good Life Gold. So it's like a gold shimmer. Mm-hmm. But do you follow, well, I know you follow Bridget who owns the bar. Yes, of course. She just had her bachelorette party. Well, a little while ago. Um, but her makeup artist did, she used the glow, the dibs glow stick, but she used this, I think it was like beeswax or some kind of Ooh. magic, like body balm. That's all natural. She put that on first and then did the dibs stick. Oh my gosh. Her skin was dewy and glowy. Oh. And now I want to get this magic beeswax stuff and use it in tandem with my dip stick. So that is something else that's in my cart. Okay. I will definitely update you because I feel like it's perfect for, I don't know if you're going to a concert and you're wearing like a skirt, you want your legs to be shiny. Yeah. So like, I'll let you know if I get it. Obviously you're going to use it all the time in the summer, but I still feel like it makes the world of a difference in winter when you're going to like show your legs. Yeah. Um, I would I, use it all the time. I use the Sol de Janeiro. I could be totally butchering the pronunciation of that. That's how I say it. Okay. So I had my friend Vic, you know, Vic, um, yes, love Vic. she was using this so long ago and I had no clue that it was viral on social media and then I couldn't find it anywhere. Of course. And I found it in Vegas with Elsie and, um, all these people were like name dropping. These are all different friends that I'm sure we'll reference a lot, but we found it and I was like, I have to get it. I am obsessed. It definitely has like that summer, like bum bum cream type of vibe. Oh, of. It smells so good. Yes. It's very it tropical. Like that? It's very tropical. I'm not a okay. uh, bum bum girl, but that's what You're I am. I am. Okay. But I was going to say, as far as the dibs, I've been eyeing that. I use the Lux. Well, I use the Lux Unfiltered. She just, uh, Sivan just launched. Um, if you guys don't follow Lux Unfiltered, love, love, love that brand. I don't know if you've tried it. It's any like of a self tanner brand, right? And they're like branching out. Like they, I love, like, I don't use bum bum cream because I use her conditioning body lotion and it is the best, but she just came out with like a blush, a bronzer and like a highlighter type of, it reminds me of the dibs. Oh yeah. So I have the contour stick too. I do like that. Okay. You do. I -hmm. need like a different contour stick. I've been trying all sorts of different ones. I'm kind of like not in love with any of them. Um, but I feel like if I could find one that I love, that's kind of like universal. So maybe I'll try the dips on, but I'm going to wait for your review. 
Yeah. Where do you, well, so I already know that I love, I love the contour stick. Um, but I need to try the body glow stick with that beeswax because when you put it on your skin, it's kind of hard to rub in, but the way that Bridget did it, she posted on her story. It was like gorgeous, like with this beeswax, so glowy and dewy. Mm -hmm. So I will definitely let you know if you need it. I feel like you would love, but Um, I just got it online. Okay. Like her own website. It's not on yeah. Sephora or Ulta. It, okay. it might be, but I haven't I just got seen it. it there. And that's why I was curious. Probably why I've never tried it. I feel like I just like shop in one spot and like, yeah, I need for to sure. Expand my horizons. Um, okay. Last what else thing is in on your this, cart? I was going to say the last thing in my cart right now is I don't know why, but like I'm dying for a new pair of sneakers. I'm You're such, such a sneaker sne- girly. I'm such a sneaker girl. Were you going to say sneaker- that? Yeah, but I feel like you're a sneaker girl too. Like, yeah, not you as definitely as you. like rock the sneaker look. And I know Kay got you those like super cute. Were they Jordans yeah. or Dunks? Jordans. Yeah, so um, cute. Have you seen like the retro New Balances? They kind of look like Dunks. Yeah, they're so cute. That's Are what you I kind of think I want. I just don't know what color. Something neutral. Well, you're you would get neutral anyways. Yeah. What I are mean, you leaning towards? The only color I would go for would be like a uh, green. Oh, cute. And like a Kelly all, green or a forest dark green? More of like a hunter, like army green, a darker cute. green. You would, wear those, you would wear those a lot come fall too. It's a good That's like transition. I was thinking because it is mainly white and then like I feel like I have the panda dunk. So why would I get just another black and white sneaker? You know, yeah. I feel like I'd rather have like a tan or a red. I'd wear a lot with Louisville stuff. But anyways, I have to ask you this as well, and I would love to hear your guys' comments in the caption or captions in the comments. Um, okay, I get like very controversial messages about how much I wear sneakers with dresses, and I feel like it's kind of like an ongoing thing on TikTok. Remember Blaine was telling us like different people were talking about like a love and hate with it on TikTok. So, I mean, I you know like where my opinion is. <laughs> yeah. I feel like it's normal to dress something down with sneakers, like a cute dress or a romper. I personally love it, especially if you're going somewhere where you're walking all day and you want to wear a dress, but you don't want to wear heels and you can make it look so cute. Like the way I remember you posting on your Instagram, how someone messaged you saying like, <laughs> I can't believe you wore sneakers with that dress, but it looks like, so cute. Like a big no-no or something. I was like, okay, well, if Hailey Bieber is wearing them like in Hailey Bieber fashion, I trust. Also, yes. I will say where I live is not like Louisville is not with like the trends. It takes them a while to like pick up on what's Yeah, what's same with Pittsburgh. Yeah. Um, but I feel like you and I are both into like early trends. Like we're watching people on social media. We're watching people in the West coast. And when I was in New York, everyone was wearing sneakers and dresses. Like I love going to New York solely for fashion inspo. Yes. And I think that you should continue to do your thing, wear your sneakers with your dresses. There's people on the internet who just will say anything. Oh my gosh. (laughs) I'm like very unaffected and like, I'm all about like have your opinion, but no, I will always wear <laughs> the sneakers. I just want to know your take on it because you're more of a girly girl than me. So I feel like you still rock that look, but I just kind of want to get your it. take on it. Yeah, okay. I'm here for it. I'm glad that's glad settled. Know. I, yes, I'm glad that's settled. Okay. I keep forgetting we're not just on FaceTime. Um, we could go and we on get into and on the- about this. We really could, but I feel like it's time to get into the meat of the episode because we have so much to unpack and dissect. Um, but okay. All things friendship. Where do we Let's do even it. freaking begin? <laughs> um, we have a lot of experience in this department. We've been we friends really for like, do. what? 20 years longer. 20. So we said five. We did. We deemed that we are friends by five and we're 27. So 22 years. <laughs> That's actually crazy. That's actually crazy. So obviously to each their own in these opinions, but we're going to give our opinions and advice and kind of like experience going through this. And I feel like yeah. at least in like, correct me if I'm wrong, right? But I feel like sometimes we've learned things through maybe making the wrong choice in a for friendship sure. move or whatever. For sure. And a lot of you asked for our advice on all things friendship. And so yes. that we thought it would be a good place to start for the first episode. 
Yes. Okay, so where should so we start? <laughs> I feel like let's give a little background. Um, I mean, we could sit here for the next hour and a half and talk about our friendship and our dynamic, but just to give you like a kind of background on it, Riley and I have been friends since we were five, literally have done everything together, um, went to school together, danced together, cheered together, went to college together, or was on a reality show together. I mean, seriously, we each other's weddings. In each other's weddings. Now our husbands are friends. Um, you name it. So, and we've been, we've lived two seconds from each other, literally like touching arms from <laughs> our bedrooms to College. down the street together, growing up, and now a flight States or a away. seven hour drive away. So, um, I know it can be hard. I feel like maybe let's start by kind of talking about adult friendships or like navigating how to like make friends or the importance of friends. Also, a lot of people wanted to know, like, how do you foster adult friendships or how do you, um, like put in effort for long distance friendships, which, um, I I guess we can start there. Does that sound good? Yeah. So I would say this might sound really weird, but Rose and I talk on Snapchat (laughs) all day, every day. Like we send videos to one another. I feel like it's just easy and Mm -hmm. there's like ways to make little group chats. Um, so just even little things, silly things like that, just keeping up with your friends, I feel like is so important. And going along with that, if you haven't talked to a friend in a while, I feel like just checking in on someone when they cross your mind is also a good way to just stay in touch. And even if you feel like, Oh, it's, it's weird. If I reach out, we haven't talked in so long. Um, like, checking in on your friends is so important. We're all going through different things. Don't you think Rose? Oh yeah, for sure. I was going to say that same thing. Like a little text goes so much further than you may think. And it's like, it's like, you have no clue if I just like even swiped up to someone's Instagram story, right? Like, I feel like we're blessed to live in a world and age where social media, we get to follow along in people's lives. Now, like we have friends that are more active on social media versus not. So maybe they're getting to see more of our everyday life, but they're (laughs) not posting as much as we are per se. But yeah, I'm so happy that we have Snapchat and we have different friend groups. Riley and I are in a bunch of different friend groups as well as being friends on our own. So we get to kind of talk the most probably between any of the friends that I have. Um, but I will say too, yeah, I agree. I think every friend is different. Like sometimes people, like I have some friends where, um, like maybe we're both bad at communicating and getting caught up in our routine. But the second we're together, we're both in the understanding and agreement. Like we pick right back up. They're not a friend that maybe needs us to check in as much. You know what I mean? Right. And I think friendship at this stage in our lives, it all comes down to effort. Like (laughs) sometimes I have to plan things three weeks in advance because everyone's busy. Everyone has jobs. Everyone has, you know, stuff that's going on. So even just taking the time to put in the effort, plan something, I have to write it in my calendar so I don't forget. But just putting in the effort will make such a difference in you don't have to see them all the time, even maybe once a month or when they're in town, just getting together and keeping that friendship alive, I guess. No. Yeah. I totally agree. I was, I mean, I literally was going to say effort is everything. It's kind of like everything. It's, it's sometimes the last thing you want to do after like a hard day at work or you're trying to balance everything. Like we are all figuring it out. And if you're in your twenties or you're going to college and you're, you know, finishing uh, high school, or maybe you're in your thirties. Like I, I don't know what age, like the majority of our listeners are going to be, but, um, we've kind of been through the college, like high school to college, college to after, and each season's just a little bit different, but it all boils down to effort. Um, and sometimes just reaching out or jumping on the phone or going out to a happy hour, even if you're tired or even if yes. you feel like, like, do you ever regret like after going out and being like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I did that. Like I really needed right. that and she needed that. Right. You will never regret it. Sometimes even too, we just need to talk things out and put things like, we're not even looking for advice. We just want to kind of feel justified in our feelings or things that are going on in our life that we just want to talk about. And you need someone to talk to a girlfriend. It's different than your relationship with your husband. I feel like everyone needs close girlfriends for that reason. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Having friends is so important. So if you're in a season right now where you just moved or you're going to college for the first time, or you're moving away from college friends and like, feel like you don't have any close friends, 
I would say there's so much power in social media right now. I actually, if you're on TikTok, I've seen this trend going around um, where people kind of do like a pitch, elevator pitch of what oh, they cute. like and um, like what they're into and then put kind of hashtags. So let's just say I'm trying to find new friends in Louisville. Like I would say I'm into fashion. I love all things health. I'm a dog mom. I'm a new wife, things like that what you like to do. If you like to grab a drink, I love that such a cute trend. Yeah. And then the hashtags allow different people who are in that same season of life to find you. And I feel like now, I mean, obviously make sure like everything's credible and that, you know, who you're going to like meet up for drinks, but I know for there's sure. like different friendship apps too. And like oh, groups. Um, so if you are in a season where you're like looking to grow friendships, also like going to workout gyms or just like not being in your phone when you're at the grocery store and just complimenting like I'm if I feel like I'm vibing or would vibe with a girl out and about, I just try to connect with them on Instagram because I feel like from there you can kind of like casualize that and get to know them and see their stories and it kind of just like breaks down that barrier. I don't know. For sure. I feel like a lot of your close friends in Louisville, like after college, a lot of us moved away. We had a really close tight knit group and then everyone kind of did their own thing. You stayed in Louisville. I feel like you met a lot of your really close best friends now at your workout classes. Is Mm -hmm. that right? At 45. Yeah. Yeah. Workout. Yep. I do F45. And I feel like you can really like, you're going to naturally bond with people. If if working out matters to you, like you already know right. that you can like bond over working out with someone. And then it grows to like, Hey, do you want to grab coffee after a workout class? And then yeah. you follow each other on social media. Like it can kind of progressively grow where it's not awkward, you know, like For you get sure. more and more comfortable with each other. But, um, yeah, I feel like just encouraging you to go out and do something scary. And if you have like a close friend or a sibling or something, like if you need a little like security crutch to go out and meet people, I always feel more confident when I have someone next to me. Oh, for sure. I mean, me and you together, I feel like we could take on the world. Yes. But I agree. If you take anything away, if you're listening or watching, if you take anything away from this, I would say the two biggest things definitely would be putting in the effort and just going out and doing it if you don't feel like it, because mm-hmm. you'll never regret it. You'll never regret hanging out and having quality time with your girlfriends. Yeah. But another thing people asked about a lot when we asked on our Instagram, what should we talk about on our podcast? Mm-hmm. Was, wait, wait, wait. Can I say one oh, more thing yeah, about yeah. long distance friendships? I will say... Um, one other thing is like, if you are in the like hustle and bustle of life or like very caught up in a busy season of your life, or you have a new partner in your life or new job that's demanding or taking your time and you feel like you can't balance everything. I hear you. I see you. And the right friends are going to understand that. But at the same time, if you and your friend, if your friend matters to you, you have to be willing to be like, Sometimes maybe financially you can't swing it, but you, you swing one trip every year or you stay up late one night or you cancel a date night with your husband to check in with your friend. Because I swear having a girl or having a group of girls or even friends that you've had before your partner, before your job, it is crazy how much that can affect your mental health. Just to like, like you said, bounce things off or get people's opinions. And so, um, I just, I wanted to just say like with long distance, cause people always are like, how did you and Riley stay friends? Like how, how do you do it? And it's like, you know, I feel like I know so much about Riley's everyday life because we put in that effort every day. Like, yeah, there's times where she's, I mean, Riley was living on the West coast for, I don't know how many months was that? Three months, a couple months recently. Yeah. For my husband's job. So I just get okay. wine. The wine is giving her something. If you're listening uh, <laughs> just to the podcast, she choked on her wine. Um, yeah. So it was like, we were on a three hour time difference and it was hard, but we checked in with each other and we understood we were on different schedules and it's, it's no biggie. If someone doesn't answer for a little while, we just, yeah. you know, we're busy and checking in is, I would say the biggest thing for us. Yeah, And like, um, the only other thing is, that I would say, and then we can move on to the next thing. Cause like I said, Riley has to rein me and I'm definitely more long winded than Riley. Um, <laughs> but like just hyping them up on social media. I feel like if I haven't talked to a friend for a little bit and maybe we haven't connected for a while, but they see something I'm doing, or for example, like just all of our friends being so supportive of us doing this and maybe oh I haven't gosh, talked to them for everything. a while. Yeah. And like them just commenting 
on what you're doing in your life, it feels so good to be like, okay, they still care. Like they're putting in the effort, even if that looks like the effort for them, that may look different than what I'm doing to foster that friendship. But it really is all trial and error. None of us are perfect. The true friends will understand, but it does take conscious effort to make friends, to keep friends. Um, But what were you going to say about what other people were asking? What like, I was just going to say kind of switching, staying with friends, but switching gears. A lot of people wanted us to comment on toxic friendships or friend breakups, which is a sad, it's kind of a sad topic, but I feel like everyone goes through it because you were telling me this before Rose, or I don't know who you were telling, but everyone is in your life sometimes just for a season or say what you Mm -hmm. said. I can't say it as good as you. No, I was just going to say something that's given me a little bit of clarity because I'm such a feeler. Like I'm an emotional girl. Oh yeah. And I always care so much about how other people are feeling or how I'm making other people feel. Yes. And so struggling, I struggled deeply with like growing apart from friends or like just getting in her head about like, oh my gosh, like are we growing apart? Like, what does she think of me? Like, I don't know all the different mental battles that you go through, but I've just come to realize that as sad as it may be in the moment, sometimes friends are truly meant to be in your life for a season and you can be thankful that they were in your life for that season. Like even I, like Riley, like I mentioned earlier, as long as like Riley and I have been friends since five, but there's been friends and different friend groups that you and I have, you know, been friends with in that season. And it's been amazing. And I'm so happy. And I look back on those memories. So grateful. I mean, some friends have ended more of like a, in a negative way, unfortunately, but I'm so happy I had them in that moment. Cause at that time they were so important to me and I still cheer them on for the most part. Um, we'll talk about like more of like the toxic friends, but it's just, sometimes that's what you need in that season. And they're around yeah. you every day. And so you're more, you you want to put in the effort. Like if you're going to high school, for example, and you're friends with people because they've been in all your classes, but then you go on to college three years after college, like it's getting harder to, to balance your time when you go home. You have college friends, you have work friends. You're going to figure out who is truly meant to be there for life. Riley and I have been blessed to have a group of friends that we are like best friends, sisters type of dynamic since sixth grade, our group yep. kind of um, came together, but there's been so many other friends in that journey that, you know, I cheer them on on social media, but I don't, I, I don't hang out with them. I haven't seen them in years. Yeah. It's crazy. I had a thought and I just lost it. You're so compelling. Well, <laughs> well, thank you. Um, oh, I thought of it. <laughs> okay, perfect. I was just going to say we, like, I am a completely different person at 27 than I was at 22 or even 25. I feel like we are all just continually growing and going through these life experiences that change us, you know, for the better sometimes. And sometimes it's these hard experience that, experiences that we go through, but we're all still growing up and changing and maturing. And I feel like sometimes you maybe just grow out of a friendship with someone and that's not a bad thing. Or sometimes maybe they're in a relationship where their partner is causing them to, Mm -hmm. I don't know, change their personality or, or act differently. So I just love what you say when you say everyone is in your life for a reason or a season, some are Mm -hmm. longer, some are shorter. Yeah. That's a good takeaway. Yeah, I think so. And that made me think of another thing I saw that people were asking as far as friendship is like how to make friends or keep friends when they're in a different season of life than you. So this can be like when a friend maybe has a boyfriend for the first time or you're so close and you do everything together and then you have a boyfriend come into the picture. It's hard. or like, um, like if friends are going through, like they're choosing to start their family, um, and have like babies or I don't know, there's so many different things. Like your story may be totally different, but I will say in that, yes, it's hard. Like it, it really is. And I think it's just, especially at the beginning of a relationship, like Riley and I can attest to it. Like you, like there's not a moment in the beginning of my relationship with Ryan or Riley, correct me if I'm wrong with Riley's beginning of her relationship with Cade that we ever doubted or second guessed how much Riley or Rose vice versa meant to one another. But when you were Mm -hmm. in like in love with someone like falling head over heels for someone, 
there's nothing like you cannot, like all you want to do is be with them. And there's just something very, very special. And we'll we'll dive into this in other episodes about the beginning of a relationship that as hard as it may be, if you are just truly want the best for your friend, then seeing them happy and like taking what you can get in that like transitional season, I feel like makes your relationship stronger. And like, you're so close with Ryan. I'm so close with Cade. And also when, and if a breakup happens, if you're still there for your friend, like they need you during a breakup. So yes, you know, I feel like letting your friend go, even though if that means you might not get as much time with them, it's all around better for everyone. And just being a supportive friend for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, we talk about Go ahead. What were you going to say? No, I was just going to say, but two, and to put it into perspective, if you are the friend that's going through that different season and you feel like your friend may be sad or left out, like do put in an effort, like yeah, to invite them even like, I don't know, we've gone on like third wheel situations, For but sure. even if like you I take a night you off. and Ryan at a wedding. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, but you know, just put an effort. Sometimes just be like, Hey, Kate, Hey, Ryan, whoever you're with, or, you know, if you have a baby, maybe like ask for a sitter or whatever the case may be like just one night, even every two months or every week, if you're in college, like go out with your friends still and meet up with the boyfriend out and about. So you still have that connection one-on-one time. Um, but were you going to say, like, let's finish out with toxic? I was going to say, yeah, we should be. This is like a sad, to- it's not a fun topic to talk about toxic friends. And I feel like we don't really have any toxic friends, but we've definitely been through times where I feel like we're at an age where we shouldn't be dealing with friendship drama. We're too old for mm-hmm. that. But there's just some people who we've been there, though. drama. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. What's your advice on toxic friends? I mean, I will say like as, as much as maybe we're not as exposed to it, we've had our fair share of toxic moments and toxic friends. And I think sometimes it's hard to see in the moment because you're with friends with them, but kind of goes back to like friends in a season. Like sometimes you're like, okay, I saw you did something that allowed me to see your true colors and I know who you are to your core. And that's not really something I jive with longevity wise, but you're in my life every day or you're in, we're in college together. We're in high school together. I'm going to be friends with you on the surface, but you've shown me enough to know, like, I don't not like to be like, so, um, unempathetic and unempathetic. Is that how you say it? Yeah. (laughs) Unempathetic. But basically like, I, I feel like, okay, let me get my thoughts straight on here. I feel like, I don't know. Can you like when someone (laughs) shows you your, their true colors, believe them and you can still be friends with someone, but just know deep down on the, on the inside, like maybe they're not as true of a friend as you thought, or maybe you are opening up to them and they're going and telling someone else what your, you thought was just between the two of you. So just believing someone when they show you your true colors, is that what you're trying to say? Yes. Yes. And like, if they do something out of character that you're like, I could never do that to a friend that I cared about. It's like, okay, well not everyone has the same heart as you. Not everyone has the same morals as you, but I will say something I've learned and that I believe into my core is like who you give your energy to and who you spend your time with is a direct result of like how you're going to be influenced and shaped into as a person. And so if you don't vibe with someone or who they are or how they're treating other people, like keep your eyes wide open for that because the people you spend your time with, you're going to start to pick up on some of those habits. And I am so key on like, who is in my life? I want them to be positive. I want them to be real with me. I want them to have things that I value and like I'm trying to grow towards as a person. But also, you know, I'm also in a season of life where we're 27. We didn't always have that mindset when we were younger. You know, like I said, sometimes you just kind of have to swallow your pride a little bit and decide like, is it easier to just stay civil with this person while they're in my life? But know that post-college or post-high school, I probably am not going to put in effort or if I move away, they're probably, I'm probably going to grow away from them in a couple of years. Right. And that's okay. That was the season. And then things change. Yes. You will find, I, if you're like in, I, I forget if this is high school or college, 
But I remember my mom and my sister telling me, and I think we talked about this too, like by junior year of it's either both or high school or college. I mean, I shouldn't be giving this advice if I don't even know the <laughs> exact stats on Let's it. Let's hear it. I'm excited. But it's just, no, I think we talked about this before. It's just, you know, who's true, like a true friend by that point. Yeah. If you've kind of like grown up together in the sense of like freshman year, sophomore year and junior year, right. I feel like by then you can kind of learn who your people are. But, um, yeah, yeah. I think it's just knowing like, it's okay to feel your feels and it's sad to lose a friend. Like it's so we've sad over friendship breakups. I mean, like it's, it's a real thing. It's sad. And what we can dive into this more at a later episode. Um, but just, you know, if you're someone of faith, you can pray about it, but go to your friends that you do know are for life. Like there's not been a time Riley and I have never gone through a season we were, where we haven't been best friends. And we're so, so, so fortunate to say that. Cause I know that's rare for people like yeah. to have a best friend since five, but you know, if I'm struggling with something and a friend and need advice, like you, you know, who your core people are. Yeah, um, you have to find you your have, people and yeah. love them hard and put in yeah. the effort. And the last thing I want to say before we end uh, this little segment is if you do have someone on your heart that you're missing or like want to rekindle, this is your, your sign to reach out and encourage. And if they don't on your friends, but if they don't reciprocate, that's on them, but at least you can know you, you put in that effort. So if you have someone that like you've been thinking about during this segment, um, I say reach out, but Uh yeah, we're here for you. And Um, Hopefully that gave you guys some advice on that. Yeah. I feel like we got kind of deep there. Yeah. Go us. That was really cute though. (laughs) Definitely check on your friends, guys. Okay. So while you're sipping, I think we should wrap up with a segment that we are so excited about. It has to do with you guys writing into us. So basically we are going to call this our girls room segment. So the feel of this segment, we wanted it to be like when you're at the bar with your friends or you're out, you're having a girls night and you go to the bathroom and everyone's in there. You don't know most of the people, but everyone's just chit chatting and you've become best friends with a stranger. You just talk about anything and everything. We've had many nights like that. So (laughs) we're going to call this the girls room. And we asked on our Instagram at drinks on us pod, we asked you guys to write in. It's not, I mean, it could be an advice segment, but it can be anything like anything you guys want us to talk about or Mm -hmm. a situation you're in or whatever it may be. We are going to talk about it. We're going to pick a couple each episode and this is called the girls room. So let me pull up. I'm so excited about this. Let me pull up some of our okay we're gonna do two right yeah we'll do two Two of our um so yeah I'm excited okay so this person needs relationship advice she said should I stay or leave my partner of 10 years he gave money $1,500 to another girl so damn this girl's significant other gave $1,500 to another girl I feel like I need some more context here yeah That's where my mind went to. Like, have you asked him why he sent $1,500? I mean, I think you're justified for feeling sus. Yeah. I feel (laughs) like, how did you find out he sent $1,500? Like, was it Venmo? Was it cash? (laughs) And why? Yeah. What was his reasoning? And if you don't don't know how to like like approach him. Yeah. I get, I get like a icky feeling that something like, I think whatever you're feeling is, probably justified, but I'd say give him the benefit of the doubt to explain himself before you like decide what the reality of it is. Um, That's a lot of money to just lend someone that is not your girlfriend or significant other. Yeah. Like is it dollars? Right. Is it his best friend or what's the relationship with this girl? I'm just all around confused. I think that you need to go <laughs> out and investigate. Sorry, I don't mean to laugh. <laughs> and figure out what's going on here. Don't you think? Yeah, it's yeah, I'd say to give like our full advice, we need a little bit more context, but trust your gut. Trust your gut. Always oh my trust gosh. your gut. I feel like especially with us girls, our gut is always right. Always. Yes. So go yes. with your gut, figure out more. Send us an update if you yes, feel inclined. Send us an update. Um, we'll we'll figure out like a system for like updates and things mm-hmm. like that. But 
I'm so, I'm sorry for you. 10 years is a long time. I haven't even been oh, with yeah. Ryan 10 years. 10 years is a really long time too. So that's another factor. I feel so like there's like, more to the story. What that I would we need. say is if you call him out, like it's all about presentation. Like if you call him out, let him speak his truth. Yes. And if he is truthful and apologetic and it's, it's 10 years, like if it's, it depends on like the magnitude of why and what, but if it was like something he messed up on, he got himself stuck in a situation and he's so truthful and wants to change. I understand 10 years is a long time commitment, but um, yeah. maybe send in an, a, an update and we can give more solicited or unsolicited advice. What's the saying? <laughs> <laughs> once we know more, or maybe once you call them out, maybe we can give you better advice then. Yeah. So let us know. Leave another okay. comment for us. Okay, let's go to the We're next one. We're here for you, girl. We are here for you. So this person wants some advice on post-married life, which we both got married. I got married in 2021. Rose, your wedding was last year, 2022. Mm-hmm. You're coming up on your one year. Insane. That's crazy. Like what? We'll the do fuck? a whole episode on weddings. <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. Wait, what'd you say? I said, what the fuck? I know time (laughs) truly flies. Okay. So this girl wants, um, some advice on post married life, family or friends pressuring you to have babies. What is your outlook? Mm. So I'll let you start this. I never really cared like about people asking us when we're having kids and I never thought I would care, but recently I found myself getting a little bit annoyed of people being like, so when are you having a baby? What are you guys thinking about for kids? And it's just like, we are both still solidifying our careers and doing our own thing. And we want kids, but we're just not ready yet. And yeah, I don't know. It's getting kind of old. Yes. That's my view. I, I hate, I hate the fact of like, you can't just enjoy where you're at. It's always what's next. Oh, sorry. Yes. I just hit the mic, but <laughs> I feel like, can't we just enjoy, like I'm all for, if you are wanting, if you and your partner or in agreeance, like family right away, all the power to you. Like I have many friends. My sister had a baby right away. Like I love it. And I love being an aunt. Um, but for me and Ryan, we're the same way. Like we are just not ready. And my take on it and how Ryan and I feel like, I think what matters is behind closed doors. If you and your partner in agreeance, you kind of just have to brush off the comments, but I agree. It's annoying. It's like, we're in a season, like we're young. We want to, Ryan and I like want to travel. We want to work on our careers. We want to do things that when we are ready for kids, I'm not sure we'll ever feel ready. It's crazy. Don't you feel like the closer you get to like, when you've always said you're going to have kids, the more you're like, it's like, I'm not ready. I can do this. (laughs) Yeah. I agree with you completely. And a whole another aspect to that is you don't know if someone behind closed doors is having fertility issues or maybe they are trying really hard and you bring it up and it's like a sad topic for them. So I don't know. I never thought that I would feel so strongly about this topic, but I don't like it. I'm like, just let us do our thing. Yes. We'll let you know when we're ready. (laughs) Yes. We'll let you know when we're ready. But, um, yeah, I think it just comes down to you and your partner. And I understand like it can be frustrating. And if maybe it's a family member, it's your side or your husband's side. Maybe ask like the person who's direct blood to maybe have a conversation with the parents or siblings. If it is bothering you, wouldn't you say like, maybe it's time to like set just like a little bit of boundaries. I don't necessarily go through that myself and I don't think you do either. No, but like it's more people out and about that are just like, Oh, you're married. Like when are the babies coming? You know? And it's like, don't get me wrong. Like I, there's nothing more than I feel like I want than to be a wife or a wife. I am a wife (laughs) than a mom. But like, I also know I'll never get this time back with Ryan where we're like free and independent. Um, but I feel like to give advice to this person, if you are struggling with it is to just have that conversation and get clear with your husband and know that people are always going to have opinions. Like yeah, and if it, it, it is harder it when it's family and friends, but if it's like strangers, I try to brush it off. But if it is family, I'd say like, if it's really bothering you or, or something is going on, like behind yeah, closed fertility. doors, yeah. just have the boundary set because that can really eat at your mental health. Yeah. Definitely. 
So those were two submissions. Yeah. Um, do you want to explain how to write in? I mean, it's pretty yeah, yeah, self-explanatory. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So basically the girls room segment, it's probably the most excited part of the show that Riley and I were really excited about. Cause we just feel like it's a fun way to kind of connect. And you really do feel like you're hanging out with each other. And we got so many good submissions. It was kind of hard to pick only two. Maybe we'll do more next time. We'll yes. see. Tell us if you would rather us do like one more. We want to like kind of find our groove in the next couple of weeks. But yes, we have saved everyone who wrote in. So don't feel like if we didn't share yours that we won't get to it. But every week, at least for now, on our Instagram page, Drinks on Us Pod, we'll put like a little question box. And if that submission is too long to kind of explain it in a question box, feel free to DM us. Um, But every week we're going to pick two, maybe three. And... um, just give you guys like un like our advice and you know it may not be the perfect pinpoint answer but it's you know sharing from Riley and I's heart and just know it's a safe place it's anonymous um and we're here to kind of like help you but I just love the idea of girls room because seriously I'm such a girls girl when I'm like out at the bar I'm like all about giving like connecting with someone that I don't know so it's yes. just something Riley and I have been really excited about yeah so we hope you guys have so much fun listening to that segment. But with that, our happy hour has come to an end. Thank you guys so much for watching or listening. We hope you enjoyed this girls night podcast drinks on us. We are brand new to the podcast world. So please, please, please share with your girlfriends, your sisters, your family, anyone you think would enjoy listening to this podcast. We would so appreciate if you shared it. Yes. Oh my gosh, Ryan. I'm like cheesing ear to ear if you're or grinning <laughs> ear to ear. It just feels like a dream. Like I cannot believe we just did our first episode, but yes. Um, so fun. That was so much fun. Um, you can find us at drinks on us pod on Instagram and TikTok, and then drinks on us on YouTube. Obviously if you're watching the video version, hi, you already know this. Um, but, and you, if you're a podcast girly and like to listen to the audio on your way to work or while you're cooking or working out, we can be found anywhere. You can listen to a podcast or whatever your preference is. Um, and if you love this, we would appreciate also like a review, a five-star review would be great, but obviously we want you to be authentic and honest. Um, Um, but thank you so much, you guys. This is so fun. Rye, I'm so proud of us. Cheers to us. This has been like a dream come true. (laughs) Honestly, a long time coming, but also to everybody listening, cheers to you guys. Um, one last final toast and cheers. I encourage you guys all to have the best week. Um, we're cheering you on all things friendship, especially like do something to make your best friend happy or do something, an act of kindness to your friend. Go do Um, it. But that's it for this week for Drinks on Us pod. Um, But as always, same time, same place next week. Love you, Rye. All right. Love you. Bye. Bye.